<laughs> this is too deep for me. It's not too deep for you, is it? You no, this is good. Good. So, their complaining kept them out of Egypt, and they couldn't enter the promised land. Now listen, a lot of people think that our promised land is heaven. It is not. That's just a bonus. Actually, because heaven is not our end destination. Our end destination is to be kings and priests and rulers and governors on the new Jerusalem and the new earth. That's the final destination, actually, if you want to get technical about it. So heaven really isn't even the final destination. We're just going to have a thousand-year party of stuff in our face there, getting to know everybody, getting our assignments for the new earth. That's all heaven is. Praise God. So our promised land is not heaven. Our promised land, in the New Testament terminology, put this up back there, it's called a place of rest. Tell your neighbor, it's a place of rest. Let me explain to you what that is. In the Old Testament, the word shalom means the place of peace of God. In our culture, our concept of peace is completely different than kingdom concept of peace. Our concept is absent of noise, conflict, and war. Ooh, I'm at peace. No kids, no husband, and no television. It is a peaceful day. <laughs> Our peace is always the absent of something. Kingdom concept of peace is always the person who is, who is dominant or dominion over the present circumstances. So earthly concept of peace is the absence of. Kingdom concept of peace is the presence of. Yes, amen. That means if I have the presence of two-thirds of the Godhead within me, I can walk in peace. I don't care what storm I'm That's facing. Right. I can walk in peace. Amen. Because I have the presence of somebody who dominated the storm. Amen. Amen. Go with me to Matthew, Mark, I'm sorry, Mark, chapter 4. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is Jesus here, a little story about Jesus and his disciples. As you're finding that, go to verse 30, or yeah, verse 35. The word shalom means external peace or a peace of sound mind. Sometimes it's also a word that describes prosperity. And if you read in the third book of John, you can read the very familiar scripture that says, May you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So your internal reality affects your external reality. Look what it says here in Mark chapter 4, starting with verse 35. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. And now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And he awoke, and they awoke him, and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? First of all, that's kind of a ridiculous statement to the creator of the world, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Notice they didn't call him Jesus, they said teacher. Because if you only recognize him as teacher, you only recognize what he can teach me a few life lessons. And that's what's wrong with a lot of Christians. Oh, they only want some life lessons. Let me walk in some goodness and just let me get along. They have the creator of the universe in their ship. Look what it says. But he was asleep on the pillow and they woke him up. Do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Come on, yeah. And if you have no faith, what is the opposite of Fear. belief? Fear. In other words, if for them to have no faith, the opposite has to be true. It means they had a heart of unbelief. They had Jesus and they just seen him. Look, they just seen him perform a miracle. That's right. That's true. It wasn't too long ago that he fed thousands and thousands of people. The miracle should have pointed them to who he was. But as soon as they got in a storm. Right. That's good. Come on, come on, come on. Now. The miracle should have showed them who Jesus' face was. Yeah. But they got wrapped up in who we just, we just 
met 10,000 people. That's good. Just a little bit later, wham! Do you not care that we perish? <laughs> That's good. Yes. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Let me just try to jump around here a minute. All too often, we, we try to work for acceptance from God. Mm -hmm. That's true. And that's not what the scripture says. Scripture says, I'm accepted, period. Boom. That's right. That's the end of it. But once I get to the place of rest, I then work out of that place of rest. Then my ministry is no longer hard. You, you heard of the thing burnout? Yeah. 
Why do we get burnt out? Because we are not operating in a spirit of rest, in a place of rest. We're still wandering and we're just, oh, we're getting burnt out. It's not even worth it no more. Come on, how many been there? I've been there. I know, I feel your heart on that. God had to teach me to operate in the promise that I've already given you. Don't let it just come alive in somebody else's heart. Let it come alive in your own spirit.